Hello, my name is Avery, and welcome back to a slightly different episode. Uh, in this episode, not only will I be, I won't be yelling like I normally do. It's very late at night. I just finished my finals, um, and everyone's sleeping. But I will also be talking about the Pokemon TCG rather than game collecting, which is what I've primarily focused on. So, yeah, this, this is going to be a calm video. Uh, it's relaxing. Don't watch this if you want to wake up in the morning. Watch it at night to go to sleep because I'm not talking very loud and I'm very tired. But yeah, um, just to give you like an outline of my plan, I'm going to basically show you guys stuff I've been able to uh, collect recently without too much of a financial burden. I'm going to talk a bit about my opinions on the, the hobby in general. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So just for some background, I collect for fun. I do not... Uh, sell cards. I really st stick with games, and I should have an eBay uh, episode out soon, or, you know, newly listed auctions and stuff like that should be up in the next couple days uh, after I upload this one. But I do appreciate the trading card game quite a bit. I have a lot of cards. I've really been focusing on uh, completing a couple binder sets lately just for fun in my free time. And yeah, so I'll just jump right into it a minute and a half into the video. So stuff I've really been able, I've really been focusing on our binder sets, but I will go through a couple of PSA cards. So here's an issue that I've noticed a lot. People say that the barrier to entry is way too high, and I completely agree. I think that, especially with the giant price jumps that we've gotten recently, uh, the barrier to entry for this card game, or for the TCG collecting, especially vintage, is almost impossible. Um, if I didn't have, like, my little side thing selling games, and, you know, I'm a full-time college student, so I don't have, like, a, a job, I can't, I don't have time for that yet, <laughs> um, then, yeah, there's no way I'd be able to afford any of this. But, um, so, I I've really focused on EX era, very early EX era. So, I want to talk to you guys about that stuff. I think the artworks from these sets are absolutely fantastic. So, if we look at Ruby and Sapphire, Dust Docks and uh, Beautifly, these are both PSA 9, but they're only like $90 each. They're really not expensive slabs. A lot of the hollow PSA 9, even unlimited for uh, Wizards of the Coast, are insanely expensive. Wizards of the Coast, of course, being uh, 2003 and prior, before Nintendo took over the publishing of the cards. But, like, right when you, you jump into EX era, you see a giant decrease in the, in the card prices, just because I don't a lot of people left the hobby at this time. That being said... The pop counts for these are insanely low. I think it's like, I mean, I haven't done the prior, prior research, but I'd assume it's between 10 and 20 for either of these. That doesn't mean that, you know, this is the rarest, most difficult card to grade. It's just nobody graded these. Uh, so the demand isn't really that high. And I think the artwork for these is fantastic. Look at that. Um, now, of course, this is from EX Ruby and Sapphire, which is the very first set that Nintendo started printing. It's basically EX era base set. Um, but the actual EX cards from these sets are very, very poorly illustrated, in my opinion. So here's an example. We have the Psy 3X. This is actually in my grade pile before the, the prices went up for grading. I think these all look like they're made by a teenager in Claymation. I think this is like the exact epitome of 2003. Another EX, Chansey EX. Again, my grade pile. I don't know what I'm going to do with them now. I honestly might just keep them for... Uh, for binder sets, and I only have one more from this set, uh, Lapras EX. Again, they're all like very mediocre in terms of their art, but then if you look at the, the Dust Docks, the Beautifly, oh wow, this one's fantastic, the Orinberry, I actually have an Orinberry winner, you could only get this from winning a, a local tournament. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I think that the artwork for the Hollows is actually significantly more, more pretty than the artwork for the, the uh, EX Hyper Rares. The same, I, I just finished my EX Dragon set. Uh, I'm missing like two cards, two promo cards. I have all the, the cards from the actual set. I completely, my, my, my same sentiment stands. So if you look at the hollows, these are beautiful. Altaria, Absol. I'm actually going to do a complete video on this when the last cards come, so I'm not going to go too much into depth onto this. But these are beautiful. And then if you look at the EXs, are back here these all look like claymation like 2000 not claymation like 2003 computer graphics really weird looking look at that rayquaza 
why does it look like that? It's very weird. So personally, I appreciate these sets for the hollows. I don't appreciate them for the EXs. Um, I think the EXs got significantly better later in the lifespan of uh, EX era. But at least for these earlier sets, yeah, I really don't think that the... the ho I think the hollows are significantly better. And a lot of them are still really inexpensive. Now, I hope I'm not hindering my own ability to buy because, you know, I can pick up PSA 9 slabs for relatively inexpensive, or relatively cheaply, sorry about that. I think that's centered. It's probably good. But I am a big uh, Gen 3 fan, so obviously that's a bit of my priority. Um, other slabs I've really been focusing on are pretty much just cards I think are cool. So this is a McDonald's Hollow from uh, 2002 in Japan. This was like a $50 card, but it's so pretty, you know? It's really pretty. Same with the EX Emerald Energy Hollow PSA 9. I think this was like a $30 card, but again, it's just like, it's a nice slab. Uh, and at this point, $30 for a slab is 100% worth it, considering it costs $20 to slab it. <laughs> um, I have some other cards that in the background. Uh, this Lugia I actually had from childhood, and this Mew is fantastically beautiful. I think this is, new artworks are, are great, but this is the uh, player, oh, sorry, the, yeah, the Japanese play promo, second season for subscribing. It's someone's new, whatever, but the art's fantastic, and a lot of these lesser-known cards, even, I mean, even in a PSA 8, which I don't have an issue with, I don't really have an issue with anything six or higher, honestly, um, I, I think that this is the type of stuff that smaller collectors or people who really just try and you know collect for fun rather than do it for profit or whatever i think that that's the thing that you should focus in on not not this era i mean focus in on the specific niche that you find interesting and hopefully it won't be too expensive but at least in my experience it's really not been too bad for the, the price increases at least have not been too bad for this early ex era uh i have a couple of other ones so EX Dragon, Ampharos. Oh, this is a PSA 9 Ampharos EX. I think this this is a great EX card. Um, that's a massive swirl right there. I got this for 200 Again, not that much for a PSA 9 Hyper Rare from 2003. Uh, like a, a mint copy. And honestly, this is like, this is very mint. Uh, and then lastly, before I get into the actual expensive slab, slabs, whatever, uh, we have a Charmeleon. E series state championship so i'm actually i have the charmander as well this one i'm going to get graded uh, i think this is going to get a nine it's in fantastic condition other than that little corner and that top corner it's in really really good shape um but the most expensive card i, I own that i bought is uh this charizard which is the national championships charizard so i am going to go into ex series i mean sorry ex dragon in a later video when I get all of the pre-release cards, etc. But um, yeah, this card I got for fourteen hundred or fifteen hundred, I believe. Um, it goes for really between two thousand and twenty-five hundred in auction. I think I got very, very, very lucky, and nobody saw the auction that I was bidding on. <laughs> um, but again, like this is a pretty niche card. I don't really think many people are aware of this Charizard's existence, and by focusing in on that like specific demographic i haven't had too much of an issue collecting now i am going to go to the other side uh if of course you are into oh wait here it's really quick ladio cx again from x dragon i'm actually going to cross this to psa i hate the cgc cases personally um but anyways now to get into the the controversial quote quote discussion um if you're interested in pretty much anything other than what i'm interested in you're gonna have a hard time collecting. And that is 100% based off of, you know, recent market trends, which are pretty much influenced by people in positions of power in the in the hobby. Obviously, there's a lot of demand that's really real because, you know, people don't have money to spend on vacations and whatever, so they're going back to their childhood and now they have a disposable income. And I'm sure you guys have heard that a million times. So now, you know, obviously they can spend it on Pokemon cards. Uh, that being said, there is series mark manipulation being done, especially with box breaks. Um, and I think that that artificially increases prices beyond what demand actually asks. Uh, you know, when you're breaking an EX Delta species box worth $20,000 and selling each pack for $800, uh, 
uh, just to make that profit when you can get an unweighed pack for 350 on eBay. It doesn't really make any sense. Uh, and people see that and they're like, oh, well, that must mean that a Flareon on EX from that set in a PSA 9 is worth, I don't know, $1,000. Because if they're spending $800 on the pack and they pull a Flareon on EX, they want that $1,000. They want the profit. In reality, you're not going to get a, an actual profit unless you pull a gold star, which is one in every two boxes. So you're probably not going to. Um, it's it's flat out gambling, but I don't have an issue with how you want to spend your money. What I do have an issue with is applying that to every other area of the market where that's not how prices work. You know, if you have a PSA 9 first edition Hitmonchan, how much is that? $5,000? Maybe more? Maybe 10000 I really don't think so. I'm pretty sure PSA 10 is about 10000 How much is a heavy first edition base set pack? $35,000. Between... If we're gonna we're gonna be conservative, 20, 20k. That doesn't make any sense. There's a, an absolute bubble going on with steel product. Uh, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and it drives the prices up for cards that really shouldn't have increased prices. Um, so, yeah, that's my basic opinion. I do want to do a long form video on this exact topic uh, and pretty much just go into it in greater detail because I really don't think many people have talked about this. But please let me know if you're interested. Um, I also want to do something like that with graded games and the gaming market in general because I do have several issues with specific aspects of it and I know I'm going to get some flack but I don't care at all. So yeah, let me know if you guys are interested. Um, I think that my mentality is a lot more collector versus investor uh, and I, well, you know, some of this stuff is good for me. Like obviously the giant increases in Pokemon games, this is, this is good for my business. Like I'm making money off of it, but that doesn't mean I can't point out the inconsistencies and the issues with the market and stuff like that. So that's what I, I do intend on doing. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in that. Tell me if you have any comments or anything on what I've previously gone over and expect an EX Dragon complete binder set. In the next probably two weeks, I will have all of the cards here. Um, but I'm not going to go into it until I have every single card, including all the promos. And there are a lot of promos for EX Dragon. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is my first real TCG video. If you guys are interested, let me know again. Uh, subscribe if you like this type of content. I do this with games as well. And yeah, I hope you guys liked it. I said that a billion times. And I will see you guys in the next video, which should not be out that much longer after this one because I'm done with school now for a week. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.